Hello, Dave here. Welcome to Chapter 9 of Learn JavaScript with me, going through the book exercises. This is Exercise 2 in Chapter 9, DOM Manipulation Intro with Pop-Up Windows. The book is Modern JavaScript Develop and Design by Larry Oman. Purchase the book, Don't Know Larry Oman. And you're welcome to go to LarryOman.com if you want to learn more about it. Also, out here at DaveCoast.com, you're welcome to come out here, out on my site. There is a learning JavaScript on the nav bar and a link to JS.DaveCoast.com, both going the same place. And this is JS.DaveCoast.com. That brings up all these exercises that are been done so far. And like I said, we're up in the second one in Chapter 9. And we can link back to Dave Coast here once again. So out here in this post, you can go to, you can always go directly js.davecoast.com. You can go out there, debug away, play around. That's the whole purpose of having them out there. Those are the examples. This is from LarryOman.com. And you'll see later on when we go through the debugger how to see these pieces. And here's the code that I've used so far, the HTML, the JavaScript, and the CSS. And also, here's the playlist with the videos that have been done so far, like this one here. So going back, and I've been doing my work on my local host, Zamp Server. Chapter 9 exercises, number 2, calling it the Browser 2 Accessible Pop-Ups. The chapter in the book is called JavaScript in the Browser. And uh, the reason uh, accessible pop-ups, prior we learned how to do window.open just in general, learning that method. Now we're using that method with looping through the DOM to identify the links that are here on the page. And also we have these links up here. For example, if I go out to Debugger, or Firebug rather, I just call it Debugger, and bring up the console, if I zip out to the DOM here, and you see there's a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, I have goofy Google ad out there and those kind of things. But let's get past that, just scrolling away here. And here's the actual document. I'm going to open that up. And in the document, there's a whole bunch of things. What we're focusing on today is that within the document, and we're in the DOM here, there is the links on the page. And I'll open that up and notice that this has brackets here. So this is a links array object, or a links array, however you want to term it. And right, it has index 0 through 11, showing that it's ooh, a length of 12. Well, that's a beautiful thing. And we can access this, for example, from the console. I can do document links. Let me run that. And here's all of the links on the page. And if I spread out a little bit, you see I have all these links here, the different exercise pages. And I have a link here at the bottom uh, to DaveCoast.com. One here, one there, I guess. Uh, how many links is enough links? Coming back to the, so this being an array in brackets, and I can go after the various indexes in the brackets. And for example, if I go after, well, boy, how many are there? Well, let's look at the link. Document.links length. Spell it correctly. I run that. Oh, it shows me that there's 12 of them. And I see that the, the last one is this link down here. But the two links on the page are here and here since it starts at zero 
and there's 12. This is link 11. So 9 and 10 are the two links I'm interested in. So I can look at links 9. Run that. Ah, see, link ID. And that's pop-up B, link B ID. That's the actual ID of the link. And we'll see that in the HTML in a moment. Just showing you the console is our friend. And if I go after 10, there's another link, and this is link AID. And here's the uh, page that it's going to bring up. So let me clear these out of the way. That's what we're messing with in this example. I'm going to reattach that to the bottom. Turn off Firebug. And let's take a look at what this screen actually does. So if I click link B here, yeah, it brings up this pop-up window. Thank you very much. Nice little pop-up. I'm just going to move it over a little bit here. Move it up. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Let me bring it back down as a window. And I can bring up link A. And there's link A. And bring link B back into the picture. And you can see that we have both pages. Yahoo. That's the exercise is having JavaScript put an event listener in front of these links and bring up those windows defined within the JavaScript. So let's look at the code that it takes to do that. And here is the code. And what we'll do is take a quick look at it here in the editor. And I'm using Notepad++ as my editor of choice. Here's the JavaScript code. Then we'll actually run it through in Firebug to see how it all works together, happy as can be. So anyway, here's the JavaScript. Here's the main HTML page. And here's that section with those two links. Notice way up above, right, I have all these. Here's all the other links. So I had to do something to deal with just these two links, because those are my only two links that I want to put event listeners on. Uh, and given these links IDs so that we can reference these HTML elements. And... Here's just very simple pop-up windows, just uh, showing the A for window A and the B for window B, just to obviously have a difference and have a different name. In the actual JavaScript, here's the uh, here's just some comments at the at the top, and it's bottom up at, in the JavaScript. Here's our uh, anonymous function that is executed when the window is loaded to set our event listeners and it will only set it if the ID is equal to link A or link B and it will turn that so once the event is triggered by clicking on one of those links we execute the create pop-up Coming back here to the HTML for a second. Now, if the visitor does not have JavaScript enabled, it's going to do the standard default browser behavior, which is just bringing up a separate tab with that uh, link. So that's progressive enhancement, what is being taught in the book, and it's ooh, how you have to think about who's actually using these pages. So going back to our, our pop-up code here, we start up down here, setting up our listeners. So when the window is loaded, execute an anonymous function that loops through the links. So it's gonna loop through all of them, right? And we just looked at this document.links length. So for any document, so if another document is, or another link is added to the page, 
it'll dynamically be added in here. I, although for this specific case, since I have those extra links on there, uh, we'd have to put in the code for the name here. And I guess I could have done some kind of a wild card for a special ID. E either way, uh, I think we get the idea of the example here, but this is the DOM manipulation piece is looping through the actual DOM, which is the document object model that has everything from the HTML page, every element is referenceable. So standard for loop here, and for each link, it's gonna check if the link is link A ID or link B ID, right, our two uh, IDs over here, then execute the create pop-up function when it is clicked. So this is setting the event listeners. Once clicked, then we execute a function called create pop-up that is passed the event object and if the type of event object, and we're just, just being named E as a shortcut here for the event object, could be named anything, but uh, that's how he does it in the book and said it was common, so going along with it. If it's not defined, which some browsers don't support it, for example, Internet Explorer uh, 8 and below, we need to use the window dot event object instead. So we'll move that in there if it's undefined. Then we set a variable called target work. And this is identifying the target because we can have two different elements here, right? And it is defined within the event object by the target attribute. So the event object dot target is for uh, some browsers, except for Internet Explorer 8 and below, in which case it is the source element under the window event. So there's our browser agnostic code. And we've been using that through many of these examples. If you've been following along otherwise, uh, important piece to know here, but this is basically how we write it without saying, ooh, is it browser IE8 or whatever, something like that. Then in here, setting a variable called window name work, a work variable, which is equal to the pop-up window plus target work, right? This target work dot ID. So it has an ID attribute that I can assign or concatenate to CH9 pop-up, and I'm basically just giving it a unique name so that both windows can live at the same time. That's how we were able to put them both side by side. Otherwise, one would just overlay the other. And then variable pop-up work actually does the window open method with target work dot href. So there's the actual URL, and there's three arguments here. One, two, three, the URL, the new window, pop-up window name, and the attributes of that window. And the attributes are uh, the height is 450, the width 950. And you can actually read that, but these are the standard attributes that are uh, used and uh, very common. Scroll bars equal, should always be equal to yes. Remember, you want to think about your visitor here. Then if pop-up work is not null and not pop-up work dot closed, which means that we actually created a pop-up window, it does exist, then go ahead, give it focus, return false, and we're done. So there's our code. We'll take a quick buzz through that in debugger, see how things work, and uh, consider our intro to DOM manipulation successful. Let's move this code out of the way, back to our window, 
And one other thing before I do bring up the debugger is just the that progressive enhancement. So if I come out here and disable JavaScript, options, and this is for Firefox, content, and just unclick the uh, enable JavaScript button here, click OK. Now when I click link B, ah, look at that. It brings up a separate tab. And if I bring up link A, it did link A in that tab. Okay, that's all well and good. Let's go back and go back to Tools, Options, Re-enable JavaScript, OK, Refresh, make sure everything's happy, happy. There's link B. There's our pop-up window with JavaScript listening for it. I'll go ahead and close that. Let's turn on Firebug. Detach it for visibility purposes. We'll go ahead and go to script here. Reload to see all our sources. It starts by just bringing up the HTML. So I click this guy up here and say, no, I want to mess with my JavaScript code. It brings up the JavaScript code here. just so we can see more of it. And I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint. All I have to do is click over here at the first executable statement within the create pop-up window. Now, it's already set, created these listeners, so we don't really need to walk through that. Just a standard uh, for loop. Uh, any questions on that, just let me know. But anyway, I went ahead and set a breakpoint here, the first executable within create pop-up. The listener is already active. So let's go back to our screen. I'll click link A. It stops at our breakpoint. Right? It's sending this E object. Notice out here we do have the E. And you can go ahead and take a look at that deeper if you wish. But I click this. Upside down arrow, do the step into. So it's about to execute the highlighted line. I click it. So now it's doing this if statement. Is E undefined? Then do it for the window event. And if I look at E, E is not undefined, although it would have sent it to the window event anyway uh, by now. So too late for that. So target work. Notice that it's that link AID, that's the target. Now if, or I'm creating another variable here, window name work, right? Doing the concatenation from this literal string plus this target work ID, and that's equal to the link AID. I click link A, and that's the ID associated with that link. Step through that, so now my target work name is that concatenation string. And you can see that over here also. Keep stepping. So now we're doing this window open with our three variables. See the, uh, the uh, URL, the name, and the attributes. Step that again. Ooh, there was our screen. So our screen is up now, right? If I... I can bring that up for a second. See, there's our pop-up window. Go back to our debugger here. Now it should it's not null and it's not closed. We obviously just saw that, so let's give it focus. All right? So now we're going to give it focus. It's ex it's about to execute that statement. Just gave it focus and return false and we're done. So that's how the code works there. I can reattach. I, I removed my breakpoint. Reattach that to the bottom. Turn off Firebug. Bring up our pop-up window again. And now we see here's our, here's our pop-up window. All well and good. And that 
is our introduction to DOM manipulation. All of the links are defined and we dynamically loop through them without hard coding. So learning JavaScript, that was chapter nine, the second exercise. This is Dave, davecoast.com. You can uh, reach me there, any comments, questions, concerns, or please leave a comment at the bottom of the video. Thank you very much for watching.